We can now bring in Alexandra Filipenko, a political analyst who joins us on the program. Thank you very much uh, for speaking to us here on uh, France 24 today. I wanted to ask you to get your assessment of where things stand on the ground right now. Uh, thank you for having me. And uh, as of now, and I think the most important thing that we've heard and that we've seen is that uh, is what the Ukrainian Defense Ministry have said. They commented on the drone strike in the airfield near Pskov, uh, near Pskov region, uh, inside Russia, deep inside Russia, I must add. And the head of the Ukrainian Defense Ministry said that they're working from the Russian territory. The UAV attack, the drone attack on the airfield in Pskov was carried out from the territory of the Russian Federation, according to Ukrainian's defense ministry. And after that attack, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky claimed that Ukrainian long-range weapons are successfully used again against those targets. And uh, th that, air there, that strike that damaged um, at least four military airplanes and uh, maybe even more, that is quite a serious strike for Russia that Russia absolutely didn't expect because they didn't expect Expect any of the military equipment to be damaged. And after that, the Secretary of National Security and Defense Council of Ukraine, uh, Danilov, he published a video after the uh, after the words of uh, President Zelensky, he even published a video that shows a test of new Ukrainian-made missile weapons. So, and after that, he even commented that Sevastopol is waiting, meaning Crimea is waiting, Kamchatka is waiting, and Kronstadt is waiting. Kamchatka is far eastern region of Russia and Kronstadt is by St. Petersburg. So by posting this video and by saying those words, actually the Secretary of National Security and Defense Council uh, notes that Ukraine now has some weapons and they don't need to rely on the European Union or, or the United States only on them. Uh, they can produce weapons themselves. And I think this is the most important things that we've heard in the last few days. You mentioned all those those strikes inside Russia, in northwestern Russia, on that airport, as you mentioned there. Uh, is that the new focus of the counteroffensive? Because we are seeing this uptick in drone attacks inside Russian territory, when what we're hearing on the ground is that things are going slower than, than Western allies had hoped they would. That is true too, and I think we've we've all heard uh, how some Western analysts and American analysts are trying to compare the situation with the Korean War, with the 38th pa parallel when uh, the Korean War stalled in 1953. Of course, the death of Stalin played a big part there, but uh, we're not getting into details, uh, into historical details. A lot of uh, analysts are now saying that maybe there should be drawn some kind of a parallel between Russia and Ukraine where the war just stops and no one gains any more territory, no one gains any more ground. Of course, Kiev is not ready for it and looks like right now the main goal of the counteroffensive is to let Russians know that the war is going on. Because I must tell you, as uh, having a lot of uh, uh, insiders, so let's say, uh, is still in Russia, uh, it looks like nothing is going on, nothing is happening. Uh, Moscovites are amazingly used to what is happening right now. The only inconvenience looks like is that uh, some just airports are being closed. Mostly every day for a few hours, airports are closed down and that's the only inconvenience. Uh, Alexander, so I just want to jump in there because what you're suggesting sounds like a stalemate. Is that what we risk seeing in the, in the weeks and months to come? Because now it's the 1st of September today winter is just around the corner how much time does ukraine have to to you know, catch up uh, when it comes to this counteroffensive it looks like Ukraine actually has some time until the end of September, until they must change tires, let's say, even wait for some time, uh, because uh, we know the situation on the ground, uh, that the mud doesn't let any technical devices, let alone tanks and uh, some uh, cars to be driven at that mud. Uh, and uh, at that period between October and sometime in late November, uh, there is going to be be a full stalemate. So now 
Ukraine needs to get uh, on top uh, in in the air. They need to have that control of the airspace. And that is their goal right now, to have those long-range missiles, to have those drones that are up and running, and the drones from Ukraine or from, from uh, allies. And so that is, their, for now, that is the main goal, as I see it, a stalemate on the ground, but trying to get ahead in the air. That seems like the, the main goal of of the of Kiev right now. And when do F-16s enter the equation and how long does it take to train pilots to fly F-16s? That might take a few months from now because uh, the decision has been made, but all pilots must be trained. And I'm staying in, I'm in Lithuania and Vilnius, and I know that in September, a lot of pilots will be in Lithuania to be trained and the trainers are coming here also. So uh, it is going to take quite some time because uh, first of all, I must say that a lot of pilots need to first learn English in order to have the, in order to be able to read the instructions and be able to be taught to be pilots. First, they need to learn the language. So this takes a lot of time. And this, again, that looks like from the end of September till the end of November, it is going to be a stalemate. And that is why Kiev is trying to get ahead in that drone game, because this drones drone game, let's, let's put it this way, actually changes the warfare. The modern warfare definitely is changed by that. Indeed, it's a very different uh, means uh, to, to war. Thank you very much for that, Alexander Filipenko, joining us there.